Shelly Mann closing things off there with a bump. That was um, Art Farmer, trumpet, and Wardell Gray, tenor saxophone, recorded at The Hague in Hollywood back in 1952 when uh, the big, big talk in jazz was uh, the uh, cool sounds from the West Coast. But there, not all of it was cool, as you could plainly hear there. Hey, we're running out of time for this hour. A couple of minutes out for important messages, and then back with more. I'm Dick Buckley. This is Chicago Public Radio. I think doing things a little bit backward. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, on our third hour, we played uh, things by the Glen Gray Casaloma Orchestra and uh, mentioned the fact that it was one of the big bands that brought the swing era on in the mid-1930s, probably more than any other band, with the possible exception of the Dorsey Brothers Orchestra. And uh, I thought, why not go back and do the real thing? So you can forget what we did two or three weeks ago because it was done by studio musicians of today trying to sound like the players of yesterday. And these are the, the real honest-to-goodness records by the Casaloma Orchestra. This is the Casaloma theme song, which features uh, the trombone. I guess that's one of the reasons I like this group. But they had a lot of radio time, too. They were sponsored by Camel Cigarettes. And... Uh, Billy, Billy Rausch was uh, the trombone soloist. Pee Wee Hunt played the jazz trombone. And uh, Sonny Dunham, who was in the trumpet section, also doubled on trombone. And Murray McEachern, who uh, came along later in the band, uh, also doubled on uh, lead alto and the trombone so that they could do a lot of things with a trombone quartet. But then we'll demonstrate that as we go through it. Let's, let, let's give a listen to the famous theme song called Smoke Rings. Gene Gifford, who was the chief arranger for the Casaloma Orchestra, did this tune written by Ned Washington. Thank you. 
who had to play that theme night after night, those high notes. Uh, well, you sit there and worry about it and uh, probably give you more trouble than it would normally. That was the theme song of the Casaloma Orchestra, Smoke Rings. The uh, orchestra was named. They were opening a new dance hall, and uh, they were going to call it the Casaloma Orchestra, and... The uh, the the uh, band was named after the dance hall, but uh, something happened with the finances. I think maybe somebody skipped town or something, and uh, so the the uh, place didn't open. They had a fine new dance hall, but um, no uh, no opening. But the the band liked that title the Casaloma Orchestra, and so they, they kept that, and that was the way the band was known in the early 1930s up until uh, the mid-1930s when they decided in order to really make it, you'd have to have a leader. All the other bands had leaders, but this fellow, it was a co-op organization, and uh, so they decided, they had a little meeting, and... Uh, decided that their lead alto player, Glenn Gray, would make the ideal front man for the band. And uh, so it became Glenn Gray and the Casaloma Orchestra. Most of their arrangements, most of their good arrangements, came from a fellow by the name of Gene Gifford. And uh, one of his big hits was a thing called White Jazz. <laughs> Thank you. 
this white jazz Gene Gifford composition and uh, arrangement. The jazz trombone solos were taken by Pee Wee Hunt. It was Billy Roush who played the, the, the beautiful theme and uh, all of the pretty trombone solos. Ray Everly was in the saxophone section for a time. I don't believe he recorded any vocals, which is probably just as well. And uh, tenor saxophone soloist was Pat Davis. Bands in that in uh, that period usually had a violin. That was one of the first things to go when swing became popular. They got rid of the fiddle players. The Jensen, the fiddle players on uh, the Casaloma side, Mel Jensen. And uh, Joe Hall was the pianist, Horse Hall. Stanley Dennis played the bass, and uh, Tony Briglia was the drummer. Kenny Sargent came along uh, a few years later and in the saxophone section, and uh, he also sang, and had a, he had a couple of big, big monster hits with uh, the band in, uh, in the mid-1930s. Clarence Hutchin Ryder was the, violin, was the clarinetist and the clarinet soloist. Sonny Dunham was the trumpet soloist. And uh, Grady Watts played uh, the Bunny Berrigan-like jazz horn. I guess that takes care of most of the people we should know in the orchestra. So let's get back with the uh, Gene Gifford arrangements of a song that everybody was recording in those days, Back Home Again in Indiana.
Cantaloma Orchestra, and that was back home again in Indiana. They were booked out of Detroit, and uh, the Midwest was uh, their stomping grounds, and they helped helped plant the seeds for big band jazz as they toured around the Midwest, just like the Dorsey Brothers Band did uh, on the East Coast with the Ivy League colleges. Here's another Gene Gifford composition and arrangement. The uh, selection we started the program with, the white jazz thing, was a hit, and so they decided. 